Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Kim Corey Studio. I'm so excited to have you here. This is our 22nd episode, and I'm thinking about this. The only correlation to that number probably is that's about how old Kim Corey looks. Oh, okay, yes. This is Thank true. you. Right. But I'm so excited to be here because you guys get to see why we brag about Kim every day in our gallery, and it's we gladly do so. But with a show of hands, how many people out there have seen Kim's studio? Nobody. I doubt it. If Maybe you have, let Randy know. He's here to take all your questions and so forth. But <laughs> we're so excited to be here. And this, this, what you're about to see, defines why Kim makes her work absolute perfection and takes more effort than any artist I know to do what you do and to come up with these incredible pieces. This, by the way, is not Snickle Fritz, but I will let him go. So Kim, it's Snickle Fox. Snickle Fox. There you go. According to Randy. So Kim, we got to look at this. So this is all a pipeline of work yet mm -hmm. to come through your hands. Right. So what makes you different in terms of most of ours, including myself, in terms of getting these pieces casted? Well, for one thing, I do all the wax work because I first started my career in the 80s as a wax worker in the fine art foundry here in Sedona, which is no longer here and I learned lots of tricks and I, I just know how to do everything and so to have somebody else do it I would still have to go over it and fix everything so I figure I'm the best wax worker I know so I might yeah. as well do my own. <laughs> well then so you, you take the effort of actually having somebody make the waxes, Jeff Christensen right, makes the waxes for right. you, he's local, you get the waxes back from him and then you're going to do what we call chasing and, and hiding any imperfections. There may be seam lines or anything else. Right. But look at these They're parts. always in pieces. Yeah. Look at all these. So pull this. I don't want to drop that. Will you pull this down so we can this see? This one. <laughs> this gosh. one I hardly ever do anymore. But look, oh. at, look at all the parts. Can you put it over here? Where look at all the parts you have to put together on that. Yeah, this one doesn't go with it. But. Yeah. So that's, that's Pink ones. to me, looks like days worth of work just to fix this and get, get it to where you see right here. That's why I don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame you. That's but amazing. It's, it's a really hard one. but So all these pieces are in the pipeline for you to get casted. Right. So then you take them to the foundry after you've, you've made the waxes. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about your Roadrunner. You featured on our episode number six. And so we can kind of track how that worked out. So if you want to show us and explain what's happened here with the Roadrunner. Okay, sure. Over. Okay, so this is what it looked like after the mold was made. So hold the Roadrunner up so you can see. Yeah, that's these what's left. Beak got bent and yeah. all these were destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Several pieces. All cut into pieces. Here's the lizard. Oh yeah. And um and so then uh, this is what the wax looks like when it's just come out of the mold. Um, so hold that up so sh people can see. Yeah. So those have to be put together, obviously, probably in right. bronze, right? Well, no. Um, oh, you put so it together. I put oh, the, I see. The tail on the bird. Mm -hmm. And then this, actually, I just didn't get it finished, but I have to fit these on and it's really difficult because they have to be at an exact angle whoops wrong way they have to be at just the right angle so i have to hold the bird up and try and make sure it's at the right angle so why you have the one on your left hand why is that why are the feet different color of wax oh because this is a uh, called jeweler's wax and it when you pour the wax into the mold it doesn't always go into these little fine areas so mm -hmm. If you paint it first with the hard wax. You get better definition, yeah. is that correct? Right. So those little tiny claws that you see here will, will uh, cast perfectly in bronze. Yep, they do, yeah. amazingly enough. <laughs> so once you get that, is there anything else you want to point out over here while we're here? Um, Any of these different waxes coming through? Well, I mean, all these are, it's just... It's just interesting to see how many pieces yes. there are, but um, there's nothing. Sylvia Herbert's with us, guys. Hey, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Giving us a good, good morning. Welcome, Sylvia. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so the strawberry from your 
RV. Yeah, that's the RV. little frogs up here on the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. This is sheltered in in leaves. A whole bunch of pieces. Yeah. This all has to be put together. Wow. For casting, including the little baby mice that have to be. Let's see. Let's see one of the baby mice. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Little baby mice. Yeah, that yeah. is tiny. Yeah. Okay, uh, so let's let's go on over and so now you've got your wax of this. Let's track the progress of your Roadrunner, which is called Oblivious, by the way. Okay. You've got the waxes right. from Jeff Christensen. You're gonna show us how you chase the waxes, which is removing any imperfections. Right. And this is your wax chasing station. Uh yes it is. And, and what piece would you like me to hand you that you were working on? Oh that. that. Yes, correct. Okay. There you go. Now I'm not sure if the sun's going to be. <laughs> so you have all your wax chasing tools over your right shoulder. Yeah, there. these are the tools I use the most, but I have hundreds actually. Yeah. <laughs> I have drawers full, but you end up with favorite ones. By the way, I have to interrupt because your squirrel is looking at you through the window. Oh, there he is. Where's breakfast? And there it is, is out there. How <laughs> funny. So was he the inspiration for some of your work, maybe? He oh, or she? Oh, yeah. Um, the squirrels, definitely, and the chipmunks, and the um, That's hilarious. Birds. What timing. Yeah, I put the bird seat out there for you, Ken, so I, you I could get to see him. your squirrel friend. I can stand here all day and watch him. <laughs> So that's the view from your studio, and you're now you're going to chase these waxes, any imperfections you see. Okay, so it's going to be hard to see. I don't know how much you can zoom in, Lee, but... Um, we have Doug Wilson with us, guys. Wow. Hey, Doug. Good morning to you, Doug. Hi, yes. Doug. Hi, Doug. Welcome. And Carla Smith as well. Oh, Carla, uh, she's yeah. She's got, got a, a great comment here. Love your work. I have uh, two of the little mice she has. Moonlight uh, at a mommy, maybe? She, she, oh, no. Shelter and the one with the little mouse. Oh, shelter. Aww. And yeah. the peas. She looks yes. at them every morning. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Love, love, love. Thanks, Carla. <laughs> Thank Carly, you. now you understand why we brag about Kim, and you don't need to be explained as to why, but this is amazing, the effort she takes to make sure they're absolutely perfect. I mean, I don't know of any artists that do this, any sculptors that go through the effort that you do. Well, Honestly. a lot of sculptors, not all, but most, I would say, have the foundries do all the wax work and all the, the prep work. Including me. Including you. Yeah, me. yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be able to find the time. I don't know how you do it. I just... You enjoyed it, obviously. Well, I mean, I've been doing it since the 80s, so I'm a little tired yeah. of it. So there is always a seam line all around. Okay. And so... I usually use this tool, which is a dental tool, and it's old and beat up, and if I lose it, I'm not sure what but I'll do. But it's broken nicely, right? Yeah, it's broken in. So how many hours would it take you to chase the imperfections out of just that one part? Oh, it's... To, uh, to do the whole oblivious takes... Well, I, I work on it for a couple days at least. Wow. Yeah, I know. It'd yeah. be nice to not have to. And then I have these um, wax tools that heat up, and you can tell it's very well used because there are always these breaks. So see there, the tip of the flower came off. So, and of course, I forgot to heat up my wax. But so you have to fabricate that now. Yeah. So I'll. I'll Ron Sidaway with us, guys. Hey, Ron. Good hey, morning, Ron. Ken. Hi to Christine. He says, now we get to see where the magic happens. Yes, and that's a, that's a good way of putting it. It is magic in here. <laughs> so then I'll add wax. I don't think, I think I was muted, guys. Ron Sidaway, good morning again to Ron. Good morning, Ron. Hi, Ron. Kelly Wickham. Kelly. Kelly. She's with us. Hi, yes, Kelly. Kelly's been here. Kelly w works in I my know. office. I know, she should be here. Bill yeah. Krieger coming in. This Bill. is wonderful. He says, thanks for taking the time. Good to see you. Oh, fun. Thanks, Bill. It's great. Which Bill is it? Krieger. Oh, do I know him? I think so. <laughs> Hi, Bill. <laughs> yes. Oh. So anyway, so and amazing. then I, I, I just know instinctively when it's going to get 
when it's going to be firm enough to yeah. carve back out, and then I'm going to have to carve this. So you're, shape you're going to have to re-sculpt that little piece. Right, wow. right. Hey, Kim, we got a great question from Kelly. Uh, since you've been, been doing this so so long, how do you come up with new ideas? It's a great question. Yeah. Oh, I um, I just like I'll be looking at something in nature, and then I just these ideas just kind of pop into my head and I how can I tell a story with this and make it interesting to people um, so I use my imagination a lot I just lots of times it happens at night when I lay down to go to sleep and um, but it can happen during daydreams as well well it's really great about your work there Often, years ago, I was told that a, a piece well done that doesn't tell a story is just considered a study. Oh. And it could be very, very well sculpted anatomically, but if it's not telling a story, your pieces tell a story. Every one of them does. Yeah, that's... And it makes, it puts a smile on your collector's face and ours as well. We have Peter Schmidt with us, guys. Amazing oh, work. Peter. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Hi, Thank you, Pete. For, yes. For <laughs> Thank you, Peter. So now it's kind of it's fun because we've been tracking the progress of this piece since episode six. We saw that what's left of the original. You've got the waxes now you're chasing, and now we get to debut the bronze, right? Yeah, we can show, um, and I can show some examples of how a bronze Before is and finished. After. Yeah, when I get it from Eric, the, the patina, patina artist. artist. And then what I do to make it look like it's mine. So here's another example of where I would normally get the piece back from Eric and say this is perfect. Or tell I may, him to I just may ship wax it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you know, because I, I trust him so much. But your work is so much. I trust him too. I know, but your work is different. Yeah. It's just different in a good way. Yeah. And Thank so you. here's another effort you take be of um, above and beyond everybody else's. You get it back. It's got the base patina. It's not finished. And you're going to now spend more hours on doing the final patina, which we get to see. Yeah. Over here. Yes. So let's do some examples here okay. of before and after. Okay, so this is Eyes, Eyes of, of the, the rainforest, rainforest as you receive it. As I receive it. Okay, so you can see it's just a base patina. Beautiful colors. Yes, and this then, is your finished patina. And so I do so the So you can eyes. see the difference. Little things like... The bug. <laughs> yeah, where's the bug? Right here. Oh, I see. Sure, yeah. right there. And you then I, I use a lot of waxes mm -hmm. to make it richer. Mm -hmm. um, That's that nice satin luster we see. Right. Yeah. And the, the darkening in the recesses. And then, like, this is some moss I mm -hmm. put on the, the branches. Yeah. And then, and it, it just makes it. Mine. I just yeah. like to feel like it's yeah. mine because so many people do work on it and of course we couldn't do them with, without all yeah. these artisans, but this way I feel like it's You're my You're getting work. it back in your possession yeah. again. It's, you, yeah. it's back to being you. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. So this is heat of the moment. Right. And so this yeah. is the, how you receive it. Right. If you hold it up like that, this is the after. And by the way, this one sold yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully. And so, again, I don't know if you can see really well, but I put a lot of markings on the lizards. And the bumblebee, the stripes. Yeah, the, the finish, the bumblebee, and the eyes. And, and you um, even you even mount it to your bases. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. you can see how this is drilled and tapped here. I meant to, bolt to turn in. that off. <laughs> yeah. So now, the Feast of Resistance. How about you showing us this debut? Okay. Your Oblivious. Okay, so this is Oblivious. The finished Oblivious. In the sun. In the sun, yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll there stand you go. It. So I you don't can see that makes a difference. all this definition you've pulled in. So let's go to what you have as you receive it. Okay, and now I've already done some work on this. I did the lizard, and I started to do the, the color on the face. However, I feel that this is too bright. The so face I'm, is? 
I, these hey, Kim colors. and Ken, we have Maria Christensen. Oh, Maria. Hi. Uh, Jack Christensen. Kim, Please. how do you keep your wax chasing station so clean? <laughs> Great question. Um, That's just for camera, right? I cleaned it up for these guys. <laughs> it's show, right? And no. Sylvia's asking, do you uh, sketch an idea first and then sculpt? Great question. Lots of times I do a little sketch, but I also like to take a little piece of clay to try and get the... Um, you know, get the right the um, three-dimensional qualities of yeah, your idea. Yeah, so I can see where I'm going to place things. But mm -hmm. it always changes a lot. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. As you're working on it, as you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, as you. So anyway, this is too bright for me. So I'm going to go back and go over it with a little bit of gray, perhaps, just mm -hmm. to mellow it out like this one. Mm -hmm. um, Our good friend Jen Farnsworth. Oh, Jen. Hi, Jen. We just saw you walk in. She says Oblivious is fantastic. <laughs> wow, she loves it. Thanks, Jen, for, yes. for watching it. Aww. Jen has Supporting the pleasure of selling Kim's work. And yeah. she's an, an artist as well. And so. she's a neighbor. Yes. <laughs> so why is that so shiny in comparison well, to this? Because this has been sprayed with lacquer like they always are. To seal it. Right. But then I, not that Eric couldn't do it, but because I do a lot of color work, um, then I'll go over it with Johnson's Paste Wax, like this. Okay, after you've done your touch-up. Right. Yeah. And, and I also spray it again with lacquer after I do my work. Oh, so okay. it's got lacquer and it's got wax. It's sealed really well. And um, then I, I usually use, um, they're all different colors of wax. There's green, red. I, I use uh, black shoe polish a lot. It's a good wax. And yeah. so it, it deepens it. And to me, it makes it look um, more richer. natural, yeah. richer. It tones things down yeah, a little bit. Yeah, kind of hey, giving. Kim, we have Ted and Lois. Oh. Uh, we've been looking forward to their comments and yes. coming in their viewing. Just want to say how much we admire your work. <laughs> And your creations are truly magical. So oh, you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ted and Lois, so much. Thank They're two you. two of my favorite people. <laughs> Ours as well. They're <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, so, um, so now let's go from what you're going to do now is you're going to start touching. Give us an example of touching that one up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'll just give a, just show you how I start out. I obviously won't be able to do everything. But, but if you whoops. see, like the leading edge of every one of these feathers has that light colored line sorry, on top of right above that my... light colored line is a darker line. Yeah, sorry, I every forgot to get a turn. Feather. Um, I can only imagine how much time that must take on all these. I know. <laughs> yes, you probably don't really want to know, do you? Uh, yeah. But once I get in a rhythm, so you usually start with um, zinc white because it's more transparent than most whites, mm -hmm. so it's not as um, harsh and bright. Okay. And um, okay, so Lee, if we can have you zoom in, where are you going to work? I want people to see how hard this the really is. Tail. On the tail. Okay. So they have this white edge on all their feathers. And so I, I try to make little strokes so it looks like part of the feather. So you're just not painting a stripe. You're giving it the variations you would see in a natural feather. Right. So see, that's not very dark. So mm -hmm. then I might mix in a little bit of um, Titan Buff, which is like a cream color. And titanium white is really bright, so I don't use it that often. So this is why your patinas are absolutely consistently perfect, because you're doing every one of them. Yeah, so I, I, no, um, no bronze leaves my studio until I'm satisfied. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that sometimes can take a while, but... But so I if you get an example like Ted and Lois Uline that have your large Amore, which is, what, a five-foot-high piece, right? Yeah, four, four and a half, four maybe. Four and a half foot. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a huge undertaking to do the final patina on that. 
Well, and I, I, I let Eric do most of that. <laughs> sure, but, but still the bass patina, you still have a lot of work yet to do. Well, yeah, I would, but I, mm. I, those bigger ones, I lots of times will let the, the foundry um, take care of it, mm -hmm. the waxing. That, that's because I can't bring it back to my studio. Plus you have to heat it up and so forth. But I do things like the stripes on the bullfrog's legs. I'll go to the to Eric's and do the the stripes on the legs mm. because they don't because I because you just know like them a certain way. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So you're gonna go through all those feathers and make it look like this one. Yeah. That is amazing, and that's just the lower part. All this up here yet to go. Well, all and. That. Right, 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 right. And I do a lot of work on the face mm -hmm. because, um, like for instance, their beaks are more gray than they are black, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll... And you, it looks like you've already done the lizard, is that...? I have done the lizard. Okay. The only thing I haven't done is black waxed it, which will make the scales more okay. noticeable. So it's kind of an antiquing. It brings up the highlights and reduces right, the, the shallow right, areas. Right. So uh, over your left shoulder, I have to say, what what is going on here? <laughs> what is this? Well, One of your pieces that's, that's been in the works forever? Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, I did it many years ago. I guess the years on there, it's like, what? Um, 1992. Oh my gosh, you weren't born then. Well, <laughs> I was very young. Oh, yes, good. <laughs> and she has um, actually a macaw. This is all broken, and I, I wanted to redo it anyway, but she'll mm -hmm. have a macaw sitting on her mm -hmm. wrist. And the reason it's here is because I had a wax made because I wanted to improve the anatomy. And I can't decide whether to finish it and produce it again. Um, but Why? it's got all kinds what's of... The, what's the reason? I don't know. It's just, uh, I just wanted to make sure that um, it's going to cost a lot of money, so I wanted to make sure that uh, people would be interested. But I guess they are, because everybody that comes here, that's the first thing well, they come on. I mean, it's been here for years. I think, yeah. I think it's time. <laughs> It's, okay. It's come time to. And okay. then another piece that. Now we saw this. Yeah. I don't know if you can hold that up where they can see. Carla it. was commenting too, guys, on how beautiful the girl, the female yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, piece. good. It okay, is. Carla. Are you talking <laughs> to Kim or the. Oh, the, I'm sorry, the wax. All right. So this is a, a canyon wren. Yeah, a canyon yeah. wren. Our good friends of Martins are looking at, just looking at. And it's a, actually a commission piece and. Um, the reason they have the long beaks is because they hunt for bugs in the cracks in the rocks. So they live oh. in rocky areas. Sure. So that way they can get down in the cracks and get the insects. Yeah, yeah. So they're cool looking birds. Hey guys, is, are these pieces available? For, yeah, for that's a good gallery question. Or? Yes, they are. Yeah. Um, at Row Gallery, in well, fact. Well, this isn't quite yet. Well, but. hopefully someday it will be <laughs> yeah. at the gallery. That'd be yeah. fantastic. That'd okay, be another good. great segue into this. Okay. So. So, but, so this is a good question, Randy. This is available, it's Kim's newest piece, as well as all your pieces are at the gallery. Mm -hmm. You have your own beautiful area. And I think, you know, I'm looking for a photo you have of your great-grandfather, oh. which kind of tells the history of... Can I run up and get it no, real quick? No, Please. Okay, well, what are we going to do? We can, we can play that. It, it'll only take two seconds. Okay, I'm so, really fast. So we're going to play the video of Kim's upstairs. Let's do that while Kim is getting her grandfather, great-grandfather's photo. And now I'm going to show you upstairs where I have my library and my office and I get all my inspiration, or a lot of it anyway. Okay. So I have my office over here. This is my library. Even though you can find everything on the internet these days, I love books, and sometimes it's nice to just sit and look through a book for reference material. And then when I want to take a break, and it's nice outside, 
This is where I go. Mm -hmm. Listen to the birds. So we always feel it's best to know the artist, and the more people know about you, the more they understand your work. Right. So I think this is important to talk about, going back in time and how you're one of many, many generations of really successful artists, including your son, who's now keeping... My son is a good artist, Yeah, too. he's a, amazing. Thank you. So you're great. Now, this is... Do you want to talk about Okay, this so young? this... And this is going to be hard to see, but you can maybe get an idea of... Um, this is my great-grandfather, who was an illustrator in New York City. And this is him in his studio in New York City. And I wish I could have met him. Um, and then... What era in time would this photo have been taken? So this would have been maybe uh, early 1900s. Does really? that make sense? Okay. Probably. I don't know. Yeah. It's a number. <laughs> yeah. I don't do numbers. <laughs> and this is one of his drawings of his wife, which I think is really beautiful. It is. So it's just nice to know that I had an artist in my family. Um, and, um, yeah, and my brother's a wildlife photographer. Yes. yes. Really good. And my sister does um, a lot of interior design type work mm -hmm. and um, so my parents weren't artists but they appreciated it. But they it. had the genes for sure. I guess so. <laughs> they just didn't tap into them. And right, have, right, yeah, right. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And what about this gentleman you want to show? Oh well and this this is um, Hold it still so people can Koshut see. Koshut Laios was my three times great grand uncle and he led a rebellion for freedom in Hungary um, to free them from Austria. And um, he's really famous there. And, and if you tell a Hungarian you're related to him, they're like, really? Are there monuments of him? There are. See, there. there are a couple here in the United States, and they're in Heroes Square in Budapest. There, really? There's a big sculpture of him. Wow, that is terrific. Yeah, what a history. Kind what of exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, Kim, what else can we talk about? Or should we uh, just invite everybody to come to the gallery and see your work finished? And Well, that would be fine with me. And then a lot of days, Kim is there. You're not always working on something, but when something new comes through, like the Roadrunner, you worked on it there for quite right. some time. Right. And as the, um, you know, as the times go on, it's it's been a little bit different with the totally. pandemic yeah. and so I'm hoping that that goes away soon yes. and then I'll start coming in regularly yes, well, we'd again. Love to have you. And we're, so, we're so proud to have you in the gallery. Thank and you. I'm so glad everybody got to see the behind the scenes of what drives Kim. This is uh, amazing to see because you don't any gallery or any studio you would walk into a sculptor like mine you don't see this kind of effort taking mm. place to make these finished pieces so beautiful. Thank you, Ken. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And please you. come to the gallery. Visit our website, rowgallery.com. We're open from 10 to 6 every day. Did you know that? Uh, 10 now. Okay. 10 to 6 every okay, day. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Come and see us. I'll be there. <laughs>